well our next chapter after the laws of motion will be work power energy and the conservation laws when we use the term conservation laws we are referring to conservation of energy so our topic of discussion will be the dot product of two vectors or the scalar product of two vectors then how to define work and then we will go through with the certain examples when we speak of the dot product we use some common symbols like for example if there are two vectors like a and b and if we put arrows on the two vectors then they will be representing the vectors but if we remove the arrows then they will become simply the magnitude of those vectors when we use the term work work is said to be done by the force if it makes the body to move in its own direction so if we apply the force in some direction the body will start moving in that direction the product of force and displacement will give the magnitude of work now if the force is resolved into two components one of them will be f cos theta that is the horizontal component other will be the vertical component that is f sin theta so we can replace the work done by f cos theta into the displacement that is the horizontal work done and in the vertical direction it should be that is f sin theta multiplied by displacement these facts are to be applied and then we have to go through with the units of work that is work is generally taken as the product of force and displacement so we compute the units of force and displacement so either it will be newton meter or it will be dyne centimeter newton meter stands for joule and dyne centimeter stands for earths one joule will be equivalent to 10 to the power 7 joules one joule is equivalent to 10 to the power 7 earths and one arc will be 10 to the power minus 7 joules then in the gravitational units we have to use the formula like work done is force into displacement but force will be gram weight multiplied by centimeter or it is kilogram weight multiplied by meter and 1 kilogram weight is equivalent to 9.8 newtons whereas 1 gram weight is equivalent to 980 dynes these facts are to be applied in the main context and when we use power it is the rate of doing work that is work over time or energy over time work is convertible to energy and energy is convertible to work and whatever slight losses are there we can ignore them so that will obey the law of conservation so the transformation of energy to mass and mass to energy normally it takes place in the fourth dimension where there is no interaction of energy or mass and energy will be taken as capacity of doing work its unit will be the same as that of work and power is work over displacement a uh, work over time and work can be taken as force into displacement whereas displacement over time will be velocity so power can be the product of force and velocity in the laws of conservation of work or energy we have to see that the total energy will be conserved total mass will be conserved so these facts are to be discussed here now our main discussion will start from the scalar product or the dot product of the two vectors when we use the two vectors we can select any two vectors like forces are f1 and f2 or suppose that there are two vectors a and b we have to go through with the scalar product or the dot product of the two vectors when we use the term vector we are taking a and b and putting arrow on the head and if we want to take the magnitude arrow is to be removed purely a and b are the magnitude of the product of two vectors now 
the main context is the scalar product gives a scalar from two vectors. So if we consider two vectors, their product will be or the scalar product gives a scalar from the two vectors. The dot product of any two vectors a and b denoted as vector a dot vector b that is a dot b is defined as a dot b and that can be written as a into b cos theta where a is the magnitude of vector a and b is the magnitude of vector b. Theta is the angle between the two vectors a and b and simply a and b without the arrows are the magnitudes of vector a and vector b. Now we find the quantity ab cos theta is a scalar quantity. b cos theta is a component of the vector. b in the direction of a, hence the scalar product of two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitude of one vector. And similarly, the component of the second vector in the direction of the first vector and vice versa. Now we have an example here. We are taking the first example regarding the work. It is written as W is equal to the dot product of force and displacement. So we have put the arrows, that is arrows are put on the head of F and S. So that is representing the two vectors like force and displacement. So vector product of the two vectors will be work done. However, work done is a scalar. Now here P is power, power is scalar, but it is equal to the vector product of force and velocity. As I have explained earlier, that power is calculated by the magnitude of force and velocity. Now we will go through with the properties of scalar product. Now, first property, the scalar product is commutative. Now to explain commutative means, if we take two numbers like x and y, then we can write xy is equal to yx. Here we are taking the dot product of two vectors a and b will be equal to the dot product of b and a. We can write this or we can rewrite this number as dot product of two vectors or scalar product is a into b cos theta or it is a cos theta into b. And then in the form of vectors, it can be written as vector b into vector a. So vector a into vector b can be written as vector b into vector a. Now the another property is the scalar product is distributive vector a into vector b plus vector c. In the distributive property, first of all vector a is multiplied by vector b and we add then the product vector a with vector c. So we can say that vector a into vector b plus c will be equal to the dot product of two vectors a and b plus the dot product of two vectors a and c. The scalar product of two mutually perpendicular vectors. When we say that mutually perpendicular vectors, the product of the vectors must be zero. So the scalar product of two mutually perpendicular vectors is zero. That is the product of A and B will be equal to AB cos 90 and that will be cos 90 zero. So the whole number will become zero. Well, when we write AB, AB is the magnitude of the vectors A and B. So we can now write vector A into vector B or the cross product of A and B will be zero. That tends to that vector A is perpendicular to vector B. Another important thing is that when we use the terms i, j and k, i is the unit vector along x-axis, j is the unit vector along y-axis and k means the unit vector along z-axis. If we take the product of i and j or j and k or k and i, their products will become zero. So the 
پروڈکٹ آف دا یونٹ ویکٹرس آئی جے زیرو جے کے زیرو کے آئی دیٹ از زیرو انادر پراپرٹی از دیٹ دا اسکیلر پروڈکٹ آف ٹو پیرل ویکٹرس از ایکول ٹو دا پروڈکٹ آف دیئر میگنیچیوڈس وین وی یوز دا ٹرم پیرل ویکٹرس obviously the angle between the two parallel lines or parallel vectors or parallel directed lines will be zero so we will write that dot product of a and b will be equal to ab cos 0 obviously cos 0 trigonometrically will be 1 so ab is multiplied by 1 and the number comes to be ab so cos 0 is 1 that's why the cross product uh, dot product of a and b will be ab cos 0 and cos 0 is 1 so the net number has become ab the dot product of ab will be equal to the magnitude of a into b now the another property is the scalar product of vector with itself that is vector multiplied by vector so scalar product of the vector with itself is equal to the square of the magnitude of the vector that is if two vectors multiply that is vector a dot product of two vectors both vectors are same that will become a a cos 0 and obviously cos 0 is 1 so the number will become a square therefore now we take the unit vectors along x axis the y axis and z axis so if i is multiplied by i that is dot product of i and i that will be 1 dot product of j and j will be 1 and dot product of k and k will be 1 that is i square is 1 j square is 1 and k square is 1 now the next property is the scalar product of two vectors is equal to the sum of the products of their corresponding x y z components let a and b are the two vectors now we are taking a and b as the two vectors and the scalar product of these two vectors are to be taken so it will be sum of the products of their corresponding x y and z components so we can write like this vector a will be equal to now a x i plus a y j plus a z k a x means the vector along x axis and i is the unit vector along x axis now we come to a y j the similar interpretation can be given that is a y means that is the vector a along y axis and j means unit vector along y axis then comes a z k a z represents the component of vector a is a z along the third axis that is z axis and k represents unit vector along z axis similar interpretation can be given for vector b that is vector b is b x i b y j plus b 2 b z k where i j and k are the unit vectors along x axis the y axis and z axis and bx by and bz are the component of the vectors along x axis the y axis and z axis the scalar product is given by that is we are referring to the scalar product of the two vectors the vectors are a and b either say the vector product of two vectors or say the scalar product of two vectors so it is vector a dot vector b now that is given as we will have to take axi plus ayj plus azk multiplied by bxi plus byj plus bzk now if we multiply the numbers like the first number axi with bxi then ayj with byj or bxi azk with bxi then in all we will get nine numbers and if we simplify those nine numbers we will come to this conclusion that is the dot product or the scalar product of vectors a and b will be axbx plus ay by by 
plus a z b z. A x is the component of the vector along x axis. B x is the component of another vector along x axis. At similar interpretation for a y b y and a z b z.